going to talk about in 5.4 is a very cool question. Can you find the length of the curve on a plane? You're not a three-dimensional curve, we're not there yet. That'd be like a calc three question, but a, a two-dimensional curve. So basically, take my favorite function ever. Can you find the distance on the curve from A to B? Not just A to B minus A, not that. Can you find out how long this curve is? And that, the answer is, well, sure. But is this the way to do it? Um, Probably not. 35 centimeters. <laughs> I win. Uh, no, that's probably not the way that you can do it and be accurate. You can get approximation. You, right? get a piece of string. you could get a piece of string and try to fit it to that. You could. Uh, and then measure the string. But you're going to be off, aren't you? Be off a little bit. The string has some width to it. You're going to be curving it. It's going to be off a little bit. At least, and you're not going to be able to fit it perfect. Volume divided by height? Say what? I said volume divided by height. Not going to give you the length, though. Volu a volume divided by the height should give you an area of some sort. The area. Let me give you maybe posit a different idea. Okay? What if we were to take part of this curve? Now, maybe that's this part right here. How would you find, using the idea of some calculus, how would you find the length of something? Change of that. We're going to be using some sort of limit, sure. Well, what if I were to divide this up and go... and make straight lines? Can you find the length of a straight line? You can get sound effects on that. Right? Can you find the length of a straight line? Jeez, I hope so. And if you know the distance from here and the distance from here, you should be able to use Pythagorean theorem to find the distance of a straight line, right? Now, of course, that's going to be approximation. However, if we move this distance to here, all these distances really, really close, the length of the straight lines will be exactly the same as the length of those curves for those little teeny itty bitty pieces. You've seen the limit idea come back again? So here's our idea. Our idea is, let's go ahead and do the same exact thing we've been doing. Now we don't care so much about the height. We don't. What we care about is this, this, that distance, that distance, and that distance. We're going to truncate all the curve. We're going to truncate it. Just make a straight line from this point to that point, where the function touches to where the next function, or where the uh, vertical touches the function to where the next vertical touches the function, and try to find out where that is. So the idea is let's cut these into small sections and let's add those lengths together. That's the idea, very similar to areas, but we're not talking about areas, we're talking about lengths now. So this we don't care so much about. <coughs> Just up here. Are you ready to go through and see how to, how to do this? Ready? So if we call this x sub 1, the first cut, and x sub 2, then we're going to get all the way out to the x sub nth cut. Can I take one of these pieces and blow it up for you so you see what's really going on here? Let's take something that looks like, how about, how about this very first piece? Now, I'm going to be pretty general. I can't call this x sub 1, so I'm going to call it x sub k. You guys are right with that one, x sub k. If that's x sub k, tell me how much of that is. Very good, the previous one. Brilliant. Okay, now you know our goal, right? Our, our goal here is to do this. The goal is to find the length from here to here. That way, when I make this distance really, 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 really small, 
it's going to very, very, very closely approximate that curve's length as well. Do you get the idea there? Okay. Now, how do you find the length? Ideas. This is kind of a secret line. What's a summation? Make a 90 degree triangle. Use make a 90, oh that's a great idea. Why don't we make a 90 degree triangle? Why don't we make a 90 degree triangle? Let's talk about this for a bit, just for a second. What's this distance? <coughs> You're overthinking it. What's the distance every time we go from one cut to another? Yes. How high is this from here to here? F of x. No. No, not f of x. You're close, though. You have the idea. F of x. F of x. Yeah. Not sub k. K minus 1. Yes. Do you notice that that's the height at that exact point? And if that's the function, that's going to be the height of that function there, too. Now, what's the height here? That's the whole height. I'm talking about the whole height. We're going to get here in just a second. So this is f of x sub k, and this is f of x sub k minus 1. We already have the width of a triangle. We need to find the height of the triangle. That lets us use Pythagorean theorem and find the length of the hypotenuse. Do you follow me on this? So we're using Pythagorean theorem. This squared plus this squared equals this squared. That's going to be great. We'll call this L sub k for the length. What would this be? What's that distance? Function f of x sub k minus f of x sub k minus 1. Yep. f of x sub k minus f of x sub k minus 1. Sure. If this is 10 and this is 7, that's 3. You just take and subtract them. The big height, that's this height right there. Minus the little height, since that's a 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle, that's got to be the exact same parallel line, you know that this height away from this height gives you that distance, and that's what we're talking about. We should have to feel okay with this so far. And if you handle that, we're almost done. Well, not really. But we're, we have the idea. <laughs> now. We have the idea. Now, let's talk about Pythagorean theorem and what it does. Pythagorean theorem says a leg squared plus a leg squared equals a hypotenuse squared, and we have some symbols for all that stuff right now. <clears throat> Hypotenuse equals, let's see how I want to do it, a leg squared plus a leg squared just like that. Okay, real quickly, are you guys okay on getting this from here? Are you sure? you see where it's coming from? Do you see how L sub k is our hypotenuse? Is that, see? Is that a delta at the end of it or an arrow? A fair row? Okay. We're about to go further. Do you see how L sub k is our hypotenuse? Yes, no. Delta x is one of our legs. This is another one of our legs. f of x of k minus f of x of k minus 1. That's a leg, it's a distance. So this squared plus this squared equals hypotenuse squared. Quick head nod, you okay with it? Okay, cool. How do you get the square away from L sub k? Are you so far so good? Do you guys have any questions on this before I continue? 
Seriously, are, are there any questions on that before I continue? None of this, this is old stuff. You had your chance on that one. Now for the fun part. You ready for the fun part? You gotta follow me on this. This is bringing us some, it's like regurgitating some stuff in there. You're gonna be like, oh no, throw it back. Just, mm, don't, don't bring that up. But just wait. Now, do you recall what the mean value theorem says? Not a bit. That was like four weeks ago. Oh, that was longer than that. Here's what the mean value theorem says. Basically, in layman's terms, we're layman. It says if I take the slope between two points, i.e., the slope between two points, then on this segment, the first derivative must equal that slope, slope at some point between these two. Follow me again. The slope of this line is something, true? True, true. At some point between here and here, the slope of my function will equal the slope of that line. Agreed? Yep. And where that takes place will be between these two points, somewhere on that interval. Do you understand that? <coughs> yeah, everybody. Here's what it says in that. It says this will equal, what's the slope of a function in terms of calculus? The what? First derivative. First derivative. First derivative. At some point, oh, oh, look, at some point, arbitrary point. Between here and here. We don't know what it is, arbitrary point. But at some point between there and there. Does it matter where it happens? I don't care. Why? Why don't I care? What's going to happen to these two numbers? Smash. Bam, smash them together. That xk dot, the sum, the sum point where the slope of my function equals the slope of my secant line, where that happens by the mean value theorem, it has to happen for a continuous function, and we're uh, assuming this is a continuous function, that has to happen, we call it xk dot. It's going to be somewhere on this interval. This is all by the mean value theorem, by the way. By the mean value theorem. By the way, did you believe me? See what this stuff actually is? I hope you see what it is. This is the change in height. We already have this on the board, actually. This is the change in height over the change in width. That, by definition, is a slope. Do you see it? The slope between two points must equal the slope of the function at some point that's between those two points. That's what the mean value theorem says. Believe it or not, that's true. Do you got it? Now we're going to do some fancy dancy math. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay, that's it. We're going to wiggle this around. Do you understand what x, k, x of k minus x of k minus 1 is? Very good. So substituting, we're going to have fun yet. Are we having fun? This is not fun. It's awesome. Here's my goal, by the way. You don't know the goal. The goal is this thing sucks. I want to get rid of it. That's the goal. That thing sucks. So how do I get rid of it? Let's try to find this here. Do you see it? Solve for it. 